you know, small changes to how we operate. They're, they are essentially essential steps to building a functional student government for our fellow students here at MSU. We've, uh, we've enhanced and protected public comment, you know, with that very first resolution we passed that, that is improved and given order to how we conduct these meetings so that we might uplift uh, the voices of our fellow students, the fellow members of our community, and hear them at this council. We've empowered our budget committee to make uh, fiscal decisions and to free up the council to look at bigger picture items like uh, student projects, how we might give back um, a lot of the funding that we receive to the students in um, effective programming, right? We've taken a stand for the human rights of our fellow students uh, with the recent uh, resolution condemning the Dobbs decision with Roe. Um, and so we've done a lot and we stand to do a lot more. Uh, this year we do face a lot of challenges. I wanna recognize that in the last 12 months, there's been a 11.9% uptick in the cost of food and that is affecting all, all of us and all of our fellow students as well. And we need to recognize this as a, um, as a threat to, to the university and we need to respond to it uh, de decisively. So um, myself and several other members, Dan, Mike, Bree, um, and, and many others on, on the council here have collaborated, Alex included, have collaborated on a measure to um, recommit the student government to, or the student council here to the food pantry. We understand it was created in 2007 by the existing student government at the time, uh, given the financial crisis of 2008, it was very merited at the time. The stats now are twice as bad as it were as it was then, in terms of the cost of food. And so we need to recognize the need to recommit our council to the food pantry here at the Metropolitan State University of Denver, so that we can ensure that our fellow students um, have full bellies and are free from um, free from food insecurity. So that's one of the things that we're working together on. In the question of food insecurity, I will not be neutral. And I would advocate that we do not take a neutral stance on the question of whether or not we tackle this uh, critical issue at this time. We should come together as a council and act decisively. Um, and if, if any of this is resonating with you, please join with us on the drafting of this proposal. We already got a lot done, um, but we have a standing invitation to join that. Um, of course, we've been working on the school supplies drive to do much of the same in in regards to meeting the material needs of the students at this university when it comes to what they need to attend classes and be successful in their classes. Um, we're building relationships with GIDA, with the Veteran Students Office. We're building relationships with the Auraria Sustainable Campus Office. We're building relationships with CCD, with UCD, and we plan to build a large coalition on this campus to address the issues that our fellow students care about. And on those issues, we will not remain neutral. The question of politics or personal ideology is one that I think obscures a bit of what we're trying to do here. For our fellow students of color, our fellow students who are undocumented, our fellow students who have experienced the criminal justice system and been imprisoned, um, among uh, our indigenous students and our LGBTQIA plus students, their lives are inextricably political. Uh, political. Right, every day is political. And so to say that we should not be political on this campus suggests that we shouldn't tackle these issues, these fundamental issues uh, that affect our fellow students. And on this, I do not think we should be neutral. We should advocate, advocate for every single one of those students so that they can have a better experience here at MSU Denver. And I invite anyone to work with me and my fellow counselors towards this mission and towards this end. But that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And I will recognize myself for a follow up. Yes, we need not remain neutral when it comes to standing up for fellow students and, the, and their core values and their security and livelihoods at stake. So when it comes to food, we've already been donating food to the food pantry. We're working yesterday, five, five boxes of food, five gallons of milk, five bags of potato was, were donated to the food bank on behalf of TSAC. TSAC did that. And so we, we, we really have a chance to really make a difference for the lives of students. And so we're gonna do that and be doing it unapologetically. So Paul and the council, thank you very much. Per agenda, moving on to section two of the agenda, 
uh, roundtable committee reports. So we're going to start off with the governing documents committee. Paul. The governing documents committee respectfully reports that we met on Thursday at three o'clock as we had talked about during our previous meeting and we had a lot of good discussion. Essentially, we went through the comments that have been made in the um, if you go into the piece, I mean, sorry, if you go into the uh, governing document files and you navigate specifically to committees, um, governing documents, you can see that we have a running um, copy of our communal document that we are commenting on and we went through what has been a lot of consensus um, and uh, well within the comments and that consensus was reaffirmed by the folks who met at this committee um, and so really we're just ironing out more and more agreement on the changes that need to be made in regards to the founding or, the, or governing documents um, and again just a standing invitation for anyone else interested in engaging in that work um, so that's we don't really have much else to report there we will be meeting at we will be meeting uh, next week at th on Thursday at three o'clock again to have another meeting uh, much the same as the last one. We'll have agenda out a couple of days beforehand. So thank you. That's all we have to report. Thank you, Paul. Mike, would you like to add anything to that? I would, yes. So um, <clears throat> as part of the committee issue that, uh, yeah, Thursday that met, um, I believe that in some of the decisions and recommendations we made, um, I believe at least once the council is a little bit more fuller that we should present those changes and vote on those changes because right now they're just kind of suggestions in a document. I believe we need to start implementing them and start ironing this out so we actually have a governing document that we can present to be like, hey, this is our constitution for the following for the following um, years to years to come. So I believe that um, either next week we um, put on an agenda that we make these changes. These changes were made. The council votes on each change. Um, we describe each change in full or um, at least sometime in August when we have a uh, more fuller council. So um, I'll Paul, go ahead. Paul. I just wanted to say that that's the plan. We're ironing out a rough draft to just propose to the council, but we first need to get everyone on the same page and that's just what we got to continue doing. And so rather than doing this like piece by piece, we're going to have a, a rough draft that we put forward and we're going to vote on it. And if there are changes we want to make to that, we can change them. But um, that's the idea. Thank you, gentlemen. Next item, say cab, Mike. Stephanie. So say cab, um, <clears throat> we have another good report, but um, we are on um, say cab is doing a few things. We're thinking that um, and anyone here is like to that, of course, but say cab is thinking of sponsoring a like a tri institutional dinner. Um, with uh, CU Denver, so Juan and Morgan, um, the president VP of that, and then Neil, the president of CCD. Um, we've been talking with that. We believe SACAB can fund these uh, ventures. Um, I'm thinking um, every few months or, or once every two months, we go out and just discuss some of the issues that are affecting all three campuses and how we can accomplish some goals, share goals that we have. Um, secondly, with SACAB, uh, let me I can't believe what that is. Um, I, oh, yeah, so um, I went to um, Trill or not to be Trill. It was a leadership day here on Metro. And I spoke to some other um, people in different organizations, student orgs here on campus, um, and to address some of their needs. What do you guys need? What can we do for you as a student advocacy council? And what can I do as a SACAB representative to meet the needs that um, a consensus, a majority consensus among some of these people were that um, they want a really true big student org space. Now, Paul has suggested um, Siggy's Hub, which I'm not 100% familiar with, familiar with, but um, if that was a suggestion um i wouldn't mind having some issues because i or um some debate on it because i'm not sure what siggy hub is um but i'd like to kind of learn further more about that thank you okay so gabe do you have in, in in the honor of our agenda i know that you guys aren't meeting but do you have any updates for for trustee uh no no trust uh no trustee updates thank you sir Social media committee updates. Uh, Chad, Alex, I guess Paul and Chad's here. I don't know if Chad has anything to update. Uh, Paul? We still haven't officially met. Um, we don't have anything new to report and um, we're still, you know, ironing out a time to meet. We still actually need to get our hands on the WordPress details from Senna. And so it's just, um, yeah, we need to persist in this because it is really important that we have this off the ground before August. It's just, uh, I haven't gotten back. Uh, I haven't got responses to my emails, and so we're going to be visiting with them in person in the office so that we might um, get some traction on this issue. Um, and I just want to say to Chad and any other members of the uh, social media committee, if we could um, 
you know, get into the chat and post what days are good for you um, specifically to meet. We can meet virtually. Um, and I know we don't, I don't know if we have an official chair of our social media committee. And so maybe if we can, you know, assign a chair, elect a chair, or uh, just get some direction so that we might be able to actually make action, make action on this, um, on this subject so that I don't, you know, don't come back next week and say, oh, nothing new to report. Thank you. Thank you. And I too have a couple of emails into the previous council person who who ran the WordPress and have not heard a response. So I'm waiting to see them in person and we will, I'm sure, happily and quickly get that uh, login. So moving on to the CSGC representative updates, I can take that. We still have not rescheduled that meeting. Um, all of us here, all of us representatives are extremely busy. I know I personally work 80 hours a week, so we have not been able to coordinate a time to meet on that. But the coalition of the, the, the leadership around Colorado is formed. There's two, there's a chair and a nice vice chair. And so good things will be to come with that, that MSU Denver will be collaborating with other, I think 17 other universities across the state to continue pushing for housing security, food security for all students in higher education in the state of Colorado. So updates will come on that as well. Next, policy advisory committee. It looks like a Taylor, I don't think, is back. So, Ree, that's you. We had no meeting this week. We will have another next week to go over policy for inclement weather. Thank you, ma'am. Mike, uh, budget committee, and then an update that I can add to if you need on the BRC uh, committee. Okay, so. Um, So I, I'm going to update on the BRC committee, which so is a budget recommendation committee. So TSAC represents the, the student constituents on that. Um, they were very unclear. I don't know if they did voting or what, but it was it was not a very clear situation. So I guess we were supposed to submit our vote via email, but but George Middlemiss did not make that clear, or the committee didn't make that clear. It was really hard because we had it's a big committee representing a bunch of different constituencies that makes up MSU Denver. So we didn't actually cast the vote, although we feel strongly one way or another. So um, we're going to have to get with that official committee to make sure they realize that our vote's important and our constituents are actually the most important on that because the university would not exist at all if there was not students going here. So with that being said, we're going to move on to number H, the Faculty Student Affairs Committee. So, Ree, that's you as well. No meeting until fall. Thank you, Ree. Um, Alan, do you have a do you have a COVID response committee thing? Uh, Paul attended the last meeting, but we only have it once a month, so it's not coming until uh, the following month. Thank you, Alan. Yep. Go ahead, Paul. I just wanted to reiterate a quick point that they are talking about a spike in BA4 and 5, the variants of the vac of uh, COVID. Um, and they suggest uh, masking uh, before going on travel and coming back from travel and testing uh, and being very cautious when traveling. And so we're going to repeat that recommendation as the council. And um, I think also I want to I want to repeat the concern that now um, COVID tests for students are going to cost them anywhere from $15 a pop to $100 a pop outside of an insurance plan. And um, that could be a problem when the school year starts. So I just think we should be mindful of that. I think we should actually stand up. I mean, if a student, this is a side note, but I think if a student personally, if a student is paying for $2,700 a year for insurance, they should have free testing whenever they want from the university provided by the university. I know personally students that have paid $2,700 a year for insurance that's required, even though the federal government does require insurance um, that certainly would pay for many, many COVID tests over and over and over and over because we certainly haven't used twenty seven hundred dollars worth of medical care from the university. So I think that's something the TSAC should tackle going forward, but there's a better place for that. So moving on to student travel committee, I'll take the I'll take this one today, folks. Um, so basically it's re Paul and I on the student TSAC representatives on the student travel committee. Um, they're constantly having presentations that TSAC has 24 hours to to view and then score. So there has been some some presentations. We have not actually participated in the scoring of them because we hadn't got all the the the, the T's crossed and the I's dotted. So going forward, we will and we'll be able to score and can update on on those various things as they come about. So that's what we have for that committee. Now we can move on to 
advisor updates. So Dr. Barone, welcome. Okay, um, a couple of updates that I have are related to um, trying to think. Um, just wanting to encourage you all to consider thinking about planning for um, the coming year and thinking about um, training or speakers, um, coordinating with some of our other shared governance structures like um, the Board of Trustees, Faculty Senate, um, in terms of like planning for the fall. So just wanted to put a bug in your ear to like start thinking about that. Um, and then whatever I can do to help facilitate, um, I'm happy to do so. Uh, but I, I did want to encourage you all to maybe think about like a full day type planning retreat or something like that. That's traditionally what we've done um, for the student government coming in. So just something to think about. Um, and then the other thing I wanted, and I think it might already be on the agenda, but I have been receiving um, several inquiries about the signage situation in the TSAC office um, from AHEC. So hoping that can be decided um, today on how you wanna move forward with that because it is time sensitive. Um, so those are two things I think I have um, that I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Barone. Appreciate all you do. All right, on to section three, new business. Follow up about letter to legislature, class suspension for voting day. So Stephanie's not here. Paul is gonna take this and set the fall uh, subsection A conversation about the team's chat. Since Stephanie's not here, that's gonna be completely struck until Stephanie comes back. So on to section A, Paul, what do you have on that letter that you drafted? So I figured I'd just give it a quick read and just uh, maybe a short statement about it. Um, this is the letter that we were sent by the folks at CSU who visited and made the suggestion that we join with them on this call um, and with uh, COYAC or the Colorado Youth Elections Advisory Council, however, however you say that, um, that we join with them on this call to support the suspension of classes on election day. Um, I think it's a really good idea. And this is, this is the letter here. Um, members of the Colorado Legislature, the Colorado Youth Elections Advisory Council plans to introduce legislation next year that will require all public state institutions of higher education to suspend classes for election day. This policy will empower Colorado schools to construct positive civic engagement cultures while allowing students to participate in elections without worrying about missing class. In fact, 10 out of the 11 states that canceled classes on November 3rd in 2020 demonstrated increased student voter turnout. The data clearly demonstrates that students vote in higher numbers when their campus places strong value on civic engagement throughout the election cycle. Now here's a blurb on CSU. Uh, Colorado State University has taken great strides to support civic engagement on campus. The All in Campus Democracy Challenge reports that 76% of CSU students voted in the 2020 elections, 76%, and a 7% increase from 2016. This is a massive success. This massive success comes down to engagement. CSU houses multiple offices and organizations that work to bring election in, elections information to students. And during election season, CSU students can vote in person at voter service and at polling center inside the Lori Student Center. This VSPC has the capacity to serve thousands of voters, but typically receives just a handful of in-person voters each day. If Colorado moves to suspend classes on election day, students would be able to quickly and easily vote at this VSPC or return their mail ballots in the box just outside. Suspending classes represents a simple solution for Colorado to boost civic engagement on public campuses. And much of that is true for our campus as well. We have a similar voting center. We hope that Colorado legislatures will consider this legislation to support political involvement for young people across the state. Students are the next generation of civic leaders and their votes matter. Thank you for your consideration. And this is where we would sign on as members of the Student Advocacy Council of uh, MSU Denver. And I would really just strongly advise that we support this. You know, the data backs that this would increase voter engagement. I know we've all talked about student engagement, at least with our elections. We should remain consistent in that and vote that they, that not only do we work to foster an environment that is both, um, you know, conducive to the 
to civic engagement here on campus, but abroad, right? Um, and that's everything I have to say on it. And I would motion that we actually vote to support this. Uh, All right, a moment, uh, Paul made a main motion. Uh, is there a second on this motion? I'll second that motion. I recognize Mike for a second on the main motion to implement this letter that can be sent to the legislature. So now we move to a vote. Alan. Nay. Mike. I vote yes. James. Sorry. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Oh, uh, yes. Alex. Not here, Naomi. Chad. Aye. Paul. Happy to vote yes. And I recognize myself for a vote. Aye. Resolution passes. Thank you, Council. All right. On to the next order of new business is Section 3, Subsection B, Official Co-Chair Elections for Fall. Discussions and then set date for voting so that the new, as we, starting August 1st, when our pay starts, we can actually have roles Role, uh, these official chairs that people can um, be in for the whole semester or year or however we do that. But we should definitely vote new ones in as I and Alan are simply acting. We were voted in as acting co-chairs. So to, to make it official per the handbook and for um, accountability and transparency to the students, let's let's discuss this. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, you said most of the things I was going to say, Dan. Um, I definitely think um, since we started getting paid in August, we should definitely set these deadlines. Um, Dr. Brown also mentioned some planning we can do as well, which I absolutely think we should add into this debate a little more. But um, I definitely think, I mean, I know Taylor doesn't quite get back to like the 14th, but um, I think as we should discuss when we want to set these chair elections um, and uh, when we kind of want to get the ball rolling on that. I think either the, the two options should be like at the start of August or once school starts in particular. So um, I wouldn't just open to some suggestion on this. Paul, then I recognize myself. I think the very first Friday of August is when we should vote. And I think we should make it so that all the council members can vote, even if they're not present. Um, we can do something. I remember the last council had essentially adopted that uh, official votes could be held on Roadrunner, Roadrunner Hub, or Roadrunner Link. I think we should figure that out and, um, you know, allow people to declare candidacies or make nominations leading up to that point. But I think the very first Friday of August would be an ideal time to have that vote. And um, I think we should be mindful too of our current communal document. Our current communal document reflects a, you know, musical chairs, which is we switch chairs every month. I'm calling it musical chairs because it's like we're switching chairs a lot. Um, and personally, I think a suspension of the rules on how often we switch chairs is in order until we iron out that particular part of our governing document. Um, that's just a suggestion that I have. I don't know if anyone likes that thought, but all right. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree on that. I don't think a chair should uh, switch switch uh, switch every every week or month or whatever. Anyway, what a chair does is facilitates a meeting. The chair doesn't have any power over anybody else, you know, so it's not like you're winning the lottery by getting the chair. In fact, I personally and I hope everybody does holds the person who's the co-chair or facilitating the meeting to an extremely high standard and high expectation that no matter what, they'll always be there and do exactly what they need to without being asked always for the student, for the student body and the council at large. So simply, um, it's, yeah, so, so with that being said, I think the chairs should be in place at least one semester um, and be held to a high standard and, and work and put more time in and stuff than expected. That's where I sit with that. Anybody else? Go ahead, uh, Mike. If we do indeed go for the first Friday of August, um, I don't mind. I, I think I think either in person or like a written statement is in order. But like, just I think if you're declaring a candidacy, you should just write like a quick little paragraph or um, write a written statement uh, why you want to be the chair. This gives chances for people who are not with us currently to run for chair if they wish. 
um, and we can read them off in the uh, meeting. But I definitely think we should definitely I agree with the vote for the first week of uh, first Friday of August. Since I've seen nobody, I'll recognize myself again. I don't know. I, I say a written statement or a verbal statement. OK, and, and I think we should have it presented to. In front of the council and then should just kind of like the Colorado uh, Student Government Assembly did. We just got nominations. The person had five minutes to be able to say their piece and then questions can be asked critically of those people who were nominated. And then after that, that person leaves the room. The next nominee comes in, get, has a few minutes to say what they say, and then they get five minutes to get critically asked questions. And then the council moves for a general vote. It could even be an anonymous vote on a piece of paper or something. So it's completely like that. But um, I definitely think there should be a statement given. I agree with you on that, Mike, um, as to why the person thinks they're a good chair, what they're going to do for a chair and how they're going to be able to solve problems if obstacles get in their way. Just a personal thought. Bree, go ahead. Um, if this is already known, I am sorry that I didn't follow, but are we also suggesting a possibility is that we change the chairs every term? All that. If that is the case, is there a possibility for the same people to run again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, good. So, yeah. So, Paul, go ahead. Thank you, Dan. I just wanted to speak to that really quick. I um, I really do um, think that we should suspend the rule on the chairs presently, so we're not out of alignment with our handbook. But outside of that, I also think that we should um, we should go with either a semester or a year, and people should be able to run as many times as they would get elected. Because I think that if someone's a competent chair, we should be able to put that competent chair back in the spot and do it again if we like. So. Um, yeah, that's everything I have to say on it. I make a motion that we suspend the rules regarding um, the changing of a chair every month. Um, and in the meantime, uh, in the governing documents committee, we work to iron that out. But in the meantime, our chair will be elected and hold the position. But it essentially, I guess, to, to clear out my motion so that or to make it a little clearer so people know what they would be voting on, my motion is that we suspend the rule on changing the chair every month and just like flat while we work on um, a better model. So the presiding chair recognizes Paul's main motion to suspend the current communal document to change from the, the week or the monthly change to, to the motion that he just put in place. Uh, is there a second on that? I a second. second. <laughs> the, the, chair, the chair recognizes Gabe for a second on that main motion. So the it's going to a vote. The, the motion's up for vote. Alan. Yes. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Yes. Chad. Yes. Paul. Yes. Recognize myself. Aye. The 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 resolution you know you know the motion unanimously passes. Thank you, Council. Um furthermore, I motion to set the date for elections. Um for the first Friday of August, and that the reason for that is um, we can put something in the chat now. Get get these um, get the candidates out now. It gives them two weeks to do this. So this is the reason I make this motion now. The co-chair recognizes Mike for his main motion on setting the elections for the new co-chairs for August Friday, August or the first Friday in August. Is there a second on that? I'd second it. The chair recognizes Paul's for the second on Mike's main motion. So it's up for a vote. Alan. Yes. Mike. Yes. James. Yes. Bree. Aye. Gabe. Yes. Chad. Yes. Paul. Yes. I recognize myself. Aye. Thank you, Council. The Reza, the motion passes unanimously. 
Okay. Okay, so moving on to new business or section three new business subsection C voting on the name change and associated signage. I had my name listed for this, but what I'm going to do is is recognize Paul and Mike to to give what they know. So Mike and I have collaborated on this resolution. Uh, it's a resolution for TSEC to adopt the name student government colon the student advocacy council. Now we sent it in the chat. If you scroll all the way to the very top of the chat, you can click on it and read it if you're virtual. But if you're here in person, I've passed out a few copies and I'm just gonna go ahead and read the abstract um, of the, bill here, I'll, I'll, I'll motion to read the abstract or, or I'll motion to read the bill. Is anyone opposed? Hearing right. none. Cool. Um, so again, a resolution for TSAC to adopt the name Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council. It's written by Mike Warner and Paul Nelson. Uh, we collaborated with Dan and it's been endorsed by uh, Armando Rijo and Dave Barasa. We spoke with them, showed it to them, thought with, got what they thought, and uh, they've endorsed what we put forward here. So the abstract reads, we, the Student Advocacy Council, uphold the commitment to the language that reflects our values and upholds the changes made by the previous council that constitute a shared governance model that is the first of its kind in the state. This decision constitutes a pragmatic fiscal move that recognizes the unique challenges our students face this year. We propose a simple name change that would clarify our branding to the student body, but continue to align with the groundbreaking shared governance model implemented by the previous council via referendum. This change would enable the official recognition of our council as the Student Advocacy Council or the Student Government or the Student Government the Student Advocacy Council of MSU Denver as the full title. We want to repeal the decision wherein $3,000 or 3.2% of our remaining projected budget was allocated for tents and tablecloths by this council during our first summer session. And it begins, whereas the Student Advocacy Council recognizes that further spending on aesthetic rebranding is not a significant priority in the face of the current challenges uh, we face. Whereas the student, the, the current budget projection for the fiscal year 2023 is $176,000 and 74, or $176,074, or $1,000, sorry. After stipends, our budget for this year will be around $93,000, uh, or it's projected to be. Whereas the first meeting of the council approved the spending of $3,000, or 3.2% of this year's remaining budget, on a new tablecloth and a tent that bears the name change from last year. Whereas while we are called the Student Advocacy Council, many of our affiliates on campus and abroad recognize and refer to us as the student government of MSU Denver. Whereas members of the council have heard critiques from the general public concerning our current name, the Student Advocacy Council and the acronym associated with it, TSAC. Whereas we find that changing the name to the student government, the Student Advocacy Council will enable us to refer to ourselves as either the MSU student government or TSAC. The above change would eliminate the need for any spending on unnecessary rebranding and would immediately free up more than 3.2% of our budget to spend on programming for the students. Now off to Mike. Therefore, be it hereby for the resolved, our new name will be the Student Government colon the Student uh, Advocacy Council of Metropolitan State University of Denver. Thereby, thereby or therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we will use our social media and further media to announce to the general MSU public our name and brand going forward as a new council. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, this council will not allocate any funding for name changes this year. Therefore, be it hereby further resolved, we repeal the first voice vote of the summer session that allocates funds from our budget committee to buy a new tent and tablecloth totaling $3,000 or 3.2% of what remains of this year's projected budget. That's all. I would motion that we call a vote on this particular resolution. The presiding chair recognizes Paul's main motion to vote on this resolution. Is there a second? I second this motion. The presiding chair recognizes Mike for seconding Paul's main motion to vote on the resolution that was just read. So the council moves to vote. Okay, Alan. Yes. 
Mike? Yes. James? Yes. Bree? Aye. Gabe? Yes. Uh, Chad? Paul? Yes. I vote yes as well. I recognize myself. Aye. Thank you, Council. The motion passes unanimously. OK, so section four of per our agenda moves on to food bank updates. Unfortunately, our colleague Alex is not here, so I will make just a quick update. Uh, TSAC yesterday delivered uh, donated five boxes of food, five bags of potatoes, five gallons of milk to the food bank. They also delivered it 50, 50 raw whole chickens to tie uh, for, uh, to the food bank that they couldn't take because they don't have they weren't individually packaged. So um, the Rocky Mountain Food Bank doesn't give away prepackaged stuff, at least this last week. So that uh, donation will be adjusted as we go forward. Um, so, yeah, I guess now, Paul, go ahead. I just wanted to thank you, Dan, for doing that. I really want to commend your efforts. Um, you've been a real ally to our efforts in supporting the food, the food pantry here on campus. And my goodness, did we give them a bunch of food yesterday, a bunch of good garlic, potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, and some like nice vegetable kebabs. Y'all should have been there. It was fantastic. And so um, I just want to commend Dan for his excellent work on that. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, Paul, uh, Mike, and then Dr. Barone, please. Um, I feel like this is a good time to announce um, our upcoming upcoming resolution that we are looking to pass um, around the first session of August. Um, we're looking to invite uh, members of the food bank into our meeting and have them speak on it. But um, we've been currently planning. This is a lot of our, where our summer planning has gone. Um, on making a, a historic investment in the food pantry. Um, they're also moving new locations, and this has kind of been endorsed by Dave and um, Armando, but we're looking to um, donate 15 grand of our current budget to the food pantry um, at the beginning of our um, fall term. So that's something that in the next coming weeks we will present. Um, I'd hope to have this uh, for you all to look at by next week, and then we'd vote the following week on that. But that is a... Um, Resolution that I thought I'd make aware to the council that we've been working on um, and uh, look forward to an upcoming vote on that. Dr. Braun. Actually, it sounds like Mike might have already talked about this maybe in a previous meeting, but um, the food pantry is moving locations um, and we just got the notice this week. Um, so by early August, we anticipate the new location will be central in the Tivoli where the um, is that called the convenience? Yep, where the old convenience store was. Um, so there will be much more capacity um, to be able to uh, provide that support and that service to our students. So we're really excited about that. And um, I'm now that I'm in the dean's office, we are looking at ways to promote that and do it in a way that can really um, support students in accessing that resource. And so. My hope is that we can collaborate with TSAC in doing that. And I know this is something you're really passionate about. So would love your support and assistance in making that happen along with the food pantry and the care center. So just wanted to, to add that. Thank you, Dr. Barone. Mm -hmm. All right, well, per the agenda, section five, we have reached public comment. So at this time, if there's members of the public here, we ask that you, we will recognize you for five minutes um, to speak, but we just ask that you put your name in the chat and say that I'm here to speak in public comment and we'll give you the floor. So if any member of the public would like to make a comment now, please note, take that in the chat and unmute yourself to speak. Not hearing any, going second. Okay, not hearing any. Hopefully at some point during this next school year, we have some public comment. Um, and, and some ideas brought to us by the students we represent. But with that being said, um, per section six, I move to adjourn the meeting. So thank you everybody for thank being you. here. Thank you everybody for being here and have a great week.